So glad you could join me on my veranda. This is, as you know, my photographic studio. And if we toddle up the other end to Tableside, let's see what fun we can have today. I'm going to make this video based on I'm a beginner and I don't know how to use these wheel nippers. They've got all these knobs on here and I just don't know what any of that means. Or for those who've been doing it for a little while and are ready to upgrade their nippers. I can say these are pretty awesome and I'll go through the features and what all these things do and why I think they're awesome. And the other thing I'll do with the new Seabell tools as I start to explore this journey is actually make a project. Thank you Rosie of Rosie Beautiful Mosaics and uh, B, B Motel she makes. Uh, for saying you should do it as a project so we can see how all of these new wonderful tools here they all are ready to be tested <laughs> work so I'm going to take her up on that suggestion to the previous version so on the back we have an allen key here that always comes with them and we now have a collection of allen keys it has a bolt through the middle that holds the two arms together so there shouldn't be any wobbly points. If they get wobbly, you may need to tighten that up or it might be ready for a new one. There's this little uh, lever here that gives you the spot as how far down you can put your tessera. I find that quite annoying. So I unscrew it and, and move it on. But you might really like it. It's up to you. Then there's this magnificent feature here which is, when you think about it, it's really about we as mosaic artists and the repetitive strain that we may get from doing this movement all the time. And depending on how far it is, that's way more movement up your arm than one of these. So what this does is open and close this gap here based on the thickness of your material. So we can see that at zero. Oops, sorry. And we can turn it to one, it's a little bit wider. And we can turn it to two, which is even m more wide. <laughs> so if I go back here to zero, that's perfect for stained glass. And number two, and sometimes depending on the make, see these these are these little tiles, they're popular vitreous tiles, are four mil thick. So we want to go to turn it to number one, just to open a little bit wider so it fits in. But even we'll do these great big vitreous tiles. I think these are about oh, 48 centimetres. But I'm thinking flowers with these. Um, or if you wanted to do something even wider, and I can't imagine that I would want to stick something that wide in there. Um, to cut with. If it's glass, I think I'll probably choose a different tool, but it's really up to you. I just don't have the strength to cut anything that wide. So that is was always a great feature and one of the differentiators of these wheel nippers. Now for the Mark II X Factor Edition. Uh, if we look closely, you can see it's got these rubber they're called rubber o-rings, but when I used them for the first time, was it yesterday or the day before, as soon as they arrived, so it's the day before, these are marvellous also for this repetitive strain issue that we may or may not have. And these behave like shock absorbers as well as holding your tests. So you might go, ooh, that's really good. The wheels already come with numbers, so that hasn't changed, which means as they get a bit blunt, you just move them around to the numbers. You unscrew this and move it to the next number. So you, a set of these wheels will probably last you a year or so, depending on what you're cutting and how much you cut. So the real change in these is this. It's marvelous. So let's have a look at how they actually work so we know whether we want a pair of these or upgrade to these or not. And I'm pretty sure you're going to say, oh, I so want them. Right, I've got my vitreous tile and I've, we've seen how they all cut in half. We don't need to see that again. 
So I'm, I'm going to cut some half keystones to put on our project around the edge of our board on our project. So what I'll do there is put the wheels in the middle. So don't look at the green bit. Look at the wheel for finding the middle. And just, this is where the this bit for me gets in the way. So I'm going to get rid of that. And for a half keystone, and I'm doing lefties, do a slight little adjustment and then squeeze. And I must say, that was pretty easy. So you end up with these key, keystone shapes that are lefties and they are great for curves. Let me see if I can get that to focus a bit better. The camera's not working properly today. So they'll be great for curves. So that's the first part of our lesson we're going to learn for this project is half keystones and how to do the edge around this board. So it becomes very practical learning. And I'll go away and do all of these and glue them down. So remember, halfway, turn, and I'll hold it here and give it a squeeze. Oh my gosh. I can't tell you how easy that is um, with that shock absorber. I felt absolutely nothing. So if you are like me, um, have older hands with a little bit of arthritis, you suffer repetitive strain from too much of this, you've got to do a whole bunch of chop, chop, chop all day, then these are the ones for you. Don't hesitate in getting yourself a pair if you don't already have them. It's almost Santa time, so Santa might be good to you. And um, they are very affordable compared to some of the um, higher end ones, but I don't think you would get better than this. But I'll be open to someone saying, oh no, that there are these that are much better. I would call these definitely X Factor. So the next edition on our project, so what's coming soon to a place near you, is about cups. And how can we cut a cup in half using ceramic scissors um, where you don't have to use a scary grinder or a Dremel or all those things that, that definitely freak me out um, and still end up with a little vertical garden where I can stick a nice little plant. So see you on the next edition.